Next news is out of Saudi Arabia. This former U.S. pastor converted to Islam after, le after living in Saudi Arabia. Samuel Earl Shropshire, an American pastor turned Muslim preacher, has revealed the inspiration behind his embracing Islam, the people of Saudi Arabia. He shared the story behind his conversion to Islam in an interview published on a semi-official Saudi news website last week. Shropshire now lives in Saudi Arabia, saying that living among the kingdom's good people and witnessing their hospitality and good morals majorly contributed to his decision to become a Muslim. So uh, more about this guy. This guy is 70 years old. Okay. Um, and he was actually nervous to go to Saudi Arabia because he had heard uh, from, from U.S. media that Muslims over there would not treat Christians very well. So he said when he got over there and people treated him really well, it inspired him to learn more about the, their religion. And he really felt God's presence in a mosque. And so now he's um, he's a He's somebody who goes over there. He, he's not an imam or anything like that, but he goes over there and he, he still teaches and preaches um, Islam. So um, I, I think this is kind of outlandish to me. You spend 70 years of your life in one religion and because people are nice to you, you just hop to another. I don't know. What do you think? I think you should go to the Chop Chop Square and see if he still wants to stay Muslim. Like he went to the worst part of Islam, the islamic world and he decided that oh, this is what i want i mean this is saudi arabia's islam is the kind of islam that other muslims say like no that's not real islam that's ho right. that's a horrible version of islam and this guy went over there and he's like yeah i like this maybe i don't know, but again th that's not fair because we, if you go to you know saudi arabia or iran or wherever it really depends your experience really depends on who you're hanging out with and which part of the city you are and who are you know who are talking to you so I don't know if this guy should go watch one of those public executions and let me see what he thinks after that in, in Saudi Arabia. But you know, the Muslims, uh, mu many Muslims, again, I don't want to talk generally, love, 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 love white converts, right? This guy is a white convert. He's a, pa he's a former pastor. This is like a huge win for them. They would, you could have a thousand people, uh, you know, a thousand normies leaving Islam and becoming ex-Muslims, they will, if one guy like this becomes a Muslim, they'll take it. They, this is a huge win. Like this guy must be, be, this guy must be, like people must be treating him like a king over there now because he's such a great PR for them, you know? Like this is like proof how beautiful Islam is. If you just consider it, just read the Quran once, just once, you can't resist being a, to become a Muslim. This is what they tell you, right? And this right. will be, this will be proof. Like, look, this guy was a pastor. He was obviously passionate about Christianity. Seventy years he was a Christian, and he just came to Saudi Arabia, and now he's a Muslim. This is proof to how, you know, they will share. Like anybody could become a Muslim if they just if they just stop listening to the media. All these, you know, people talking right. about his uh, talking shit about Islam. No, just come and you just see the beauty of Islam. Look what look at this guy. So they did just love, love, love this guy. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep sharing this story and using it as an example. It would the only way this could have been a better story for them to share if this man was a mo woman, right? Then they would this like if it was a woman. A white woman, former Christian convert to Islam, is like this. That's their wet dream, right? Um, yeah, but but this is good enough, I think, for m many of them. Um, yeah. Let me see. Anne is saying instantly. Oh no, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I don't think it's fair. I mean, who said that? That was Einstein. Is that an Einstein quote? I, yeah. I think it's an Einstein quote. Uh, if it just remember, that's not really the definition of insanity when it comes to mental uh, health professionals. And you know, just because somebody is religious, that doesn't mean they're insane. Um, in fact, it would be more excusable if there are people. I mean, I don't know actually. I don't know much about mental health, but I'm just saying, don't call people insane. Don't use mental health labels as a way to insult people because um you know I, I, I don't think people most people understand how mental health works in fact you, you could hold people more responsible for their actions if you don't think they're insane uh alan saying he just he just wanted easier access to young boys for sure oh my god no alan 
Not for sure at all. You have no idea who this guy is, when and what his motivations are, because you've never met him or you've never and you've never, you've never talked to him. Uh, Bob is saying from one delusion to another. Yeah, I, yep, good, good comment. Let me see what the YouTube comments are. Um, GV saying, is it easier to convert a Christian to Islam or a Muslim to Christianity? Well, it really depends on which. It really depends on the specific circumstances. I can't give a general answer to you to that. Uh, Chuck is saying, didn't ISIS did a lot of damage to Islam propaganda? Yeah, I mean, in fact, a lot of people that uh, um, the number of ex-Muslims grew because of ISIS. Like a lot of people, um, and I don't think it's the best argument against Islam because people can say like, well, ISIS is not. I mean, the best way to the best argument for against Islam is that there is no evidence for any of his claims. That's as simple as that. But yeah, it's true that ISIS did cause a lot of people to leave Islam. Subham is saying religious people are easier to fool. They are really gullible for a start. They would believe almost anything. I don't think it's fair to generalize all religious people like that. Um, I also think that people, some people are extremely smart about something and extremely dumb about something else because people can compartmentalize. Um, you could be like, in fact, somebody could be extremely religious and accept all the nonsense of religious belief, but they could really be able to detect scam artists, right? Like maybe they have never been conned about anything else in their life and they're actually an expert at detecting people lying to them. So just because somebody is religious and gullible about accepting religious beliefs, that doesn't mean they're always going to be gullible about everything else. But it might suggest that, uh, it might suggest there might be a correlation. It's just not absolute. It's not just, you know, um, just because you're religious, therefore you, you know, don't make generalized comments. I mean, you could you could say more religious people are more gullible. That would might be accurate, but you can't say religious people are gullible because I think you you will be able to find examples that doesn't uh, that suggests otherwise. Um, let me see. The Australian Atheist Club is saying they are all full on God's followers everywhere. It's it's on loudspeakers every day. They call to pray. Everybody, everyone religious. He will fit right in secretly. He knows it's all BS. I don't know if you guys can say that, guys. Like secretly, he knows that this is all BS. This pastor, no, he might actually believe in this nonsense. We don't know the guy. We can't just assume. Don't just, you know, even even mental health professionals don't make judgment calls like this on people over online. Uh, they don't even know what people's motivations are and what people actually believe in and what don't believe in unless they meet with them and talk to them for hours. So given that we're not mental health professionals, just by hearing that we like a lot of us haven't even a lot of the people that are commenting haven't even clicked on the article. It's just they're just deciding what they know, all they know about this guy just by the by, by the title of this news. Like I, you should be a little bit skeptical about the things that you decide that you believe. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي podcast باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.